Hi, I'm Mike Dana with Light Reading, and we're here with uh, Eben from Dish Network. He's the, the network guy, the guy who knows all the stuff about all the networks. Uh, and so, so this is a this is, a, and we're here at uh, Network X, and we're talking all things network. Um, and so, Dish obviously has a very interesting network to talk about. Uh, it's it's open RAN. It's it's standalone. It's in the cloud. It's all the things. So, Evan, you were talking about how network timing has been an issue that Dish has worked to address as it has deployed a network in the cloud. Yes. So maybe you can talk about just like what were the issues involved in addressing network timing? Sure. How were those issues addressed? Why did you have to do that? Okay. And why, why do we even have to care about timing in the network? Sure. Yeah. So, <clears throat> timing, as it refers to how 3GPP networks actually function is mm. what I'm referring to. Okay. Um, and the challenge is that these 3G, 4G, and now our 5G network mm. um, is extremely timer-based. So signaling messages uh, have to get certain responses from certain other parts of the network at a very, very, very specific amount of time. Mm. And these timers are very sensitive. Mm. And when those timers are not respected, things go bad very quickly. Now, that means that synchronization and extreme predictability of how long something will take to move from A to B is crucial for a standalone 5G core network yeah. to run in the public cloud. And it has to be, each, each element of the network has to have the same time yes. in order to get everything. Yes. Okay. And Public cloud infrastructures were not designed with that in mind. Mm. Public cloud infrastructures were designed for scalability of IT workloads, mm. which are generally not time sensitive. Right. We like it when IT things are faster. Yeah. Um, if they're a little bit slower, then maybe we get a little irritated, but we're still okay with it. Yeah. If you are transcoding videos on a CDN, and it takes 12 seconds rather than 11,8 seconds, that's probably that's not bad. so bad. Right. Telecommunications network is not going to be happy with that. Um, we need things to happen on the microsecond, every single microsecond of the day uh -huh. for the rest of eternity. <laughs> they need things to work that way. Okay. And because the cloud's not designed intrinsically to actually cater for that, yeah. it means that we had to do a lot of additional work for a standalone 5G core network, right. carrier grade core network, to operate in an environment like that. Mm. Now, we won't have enough time to go through all the solutions, yeah, yeah. but in principle, what it comes down to is it goes to pushing our partners to levels of detailed understanding of how their own products and their own solutions work. Mm. Um, to levels that they've never gone themselves mm. before. Mm. And to integrate systems with each other and then testing those systems across various platforms and partners over and over and over again mm. to be able to understand the ranges of predictable or unpredictable behavior that we will experience to ensure that in the end, we have a standalone 5G core network that behaves at carrier grade levels the whole time. Yeah, and it's, so it's really about introducing the telco requirements into an existing cloud environment yes. and making sure that they can address those yes. requirements. And does it have to do with the uh, regions? You know, if it, it works in one metro area, but then if you introduce a different metro area, you have to connect those different metro areas onto the same timing system. Is that the way to think about it? Um, I mean, that per se is not really a problem. Okay. Um, Every, any large geographically distributed network has got data centers in Miami and has data centers in Seattle. Right. And those data centers need to talk to each other. Okay. And so that is okay. What happens is, is inside data centers or even in between them, that time sensitivity mm. is not per se a parameter that is optimized for inside a public cloud, yeah. that certain things will always happen down to the millisecond, every millisecond, forever. Mm. If there is deviation, it's okay. 
the, the beauty of IT workloads and what, what we're learning in Telco to be able to use from IT workloads is that if, these, if this Kubernetes cluster has a problem or if you have true cloud native software, if that component has a challenge, you just kill it and you make a new one that takes over the work, workload. If it's a stateless workload, then it can just take over the workload. That takes a finite amount of time. Right which in an IT situation, if you're browsing the Amazon website or if you're watching a Netflix movie, maybe costs your interaction only a couple of milliseconds. For a telecommunications network, that's probably a dozen messages that you've lost. Mm. And if that message was you trying to set up a call with me, you will experience a call failure. It right. will, you will push the green button and the call will not go through. Yeah. The next time you push the green button, it will go through. The, we want that call to go through 100% of the time. Right. So that's where the, 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 the margins of error, maybe that's not the best way to describe it, but the margins of error inside IT workloads are just big enough that that doesn't really become a problem. In carrier grade 5G standalone core networks, those margins of error are smaller, big, big and right. therefore we have to surgically design and test an architect yeah. in between different platforms yeah. to make sure that we can have, actually have that work reliably. Super interesting. But so, so that's one of the issues that D Dish has been working out. Yes. As it's built out its network. Exactly. Um, but uh, you've talked about some of the benefits that Dish has been able to enjoy from having a network that runs in the cloud. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, and you mentioned uh, uh, you've been able to shift your core overnight. So talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how you were able to upgrade. So yes. Yeah. So, the challenges seem daunting, yeah. and, and uh, believe you me, it is. They are serious. they are very serious, yeah. and they are hard. The benefit, however, is that we have a national carrier-grade network covering almost 80% of Americans. Um, AWS brings out a new uh, Moore's law increase capacity EC2 instance going from the generation five to generation six. Inside of AWS. Inside of okay. AWS. They have upgraded their hardware, the switching fabric, security, firewalling, the amount of ethernet or, or virtual uh, network cards that you can have on an instance. Everything has been upgraded to be about twice as fast. Okay. Um, for me to take benefit from that, I can move my entire core network, the entire US core network, for my whole network in one night yeah. with the push of a button. Yeah. And the automation platforms will move all of my instances across from the generation five EC2 instances to the generation six EC, EC2 instances. So tomorrow morning when the maintenance window, windows closed, our network now benefits from twice as much speed, higher security, more features, more network interfaces, uh, greater capacity, and in our case, because we're in the cloud, less cost, because yeah. it's running on, on newer infrastructure. And, and this is a change that you have implemented, like yes. you're, you're just speaking yes. for this we've is just, a recent... We've just done that. Just done that. We've just done that. Yeah. Um, a typical upgrade of that magnitude for a classical carrier yeah. could run as much as a year yeah. for you to build the infrastructure, cable the infrastructure, integrate it, test it, uh, make sure that it's all working properly. Then you need to get rid of the old stuff. You need to depreciate, uh, accelerate the depreciation of it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you need to move over physical workloads into physical infrastructure bit by bit, yeah. potentially to create space for new pieces to come in. Yeah. We do that in one night. Yeah. So the benefits are tremendous yeah. to be able to do that. But it's, it's, it's not for everybody. <laughs> Evan from DISH, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Right.